All right, and for the written section, we're going to split up part two into um, four questions each or two halves. There's eight questions in part two, so we're going to look at 25, 26, 27, and 28 in this video. So for 25, we were asked to graph the function f of x, which was a square root graph. It was radical x plus 2. Things we wanted to do here to answer this question. Obviously, you could see work-wise, I'm using... Um, a table of values that's going to help me ultimately graph this notice how I end up skipping values I'm choosing the nice points here obviously if I'm using square roots a lot of things are going to work out to um, some you know decimals and things like that these are ultimately going to create perfect squares hence the whole numbers on the right hand side now other things to be careful of here notice my little notation there what is that little domain thing? First of all, it's a nice hint because it's actually the first and last value we have in our graph, but it's also telling me not to have an arrow on the right-hand side. Obviously, I would never have an arrow on the left-hand side because um, with square roots, that's where we start to see an error because we're taking the square root of a negative value. So it's always restricted there. But on the right-hand side, we usually do put an arrow because this will continue to, uh, you know, we x values do increase to infinity with a traditional square root of x graph. But in this case, since we are restricting the domain, we want to stop there. We should have two endpoints. Putting arrows would result in a 1 out of 2 here. Any other little slight mistake, plotting a point off slightly, would also result in a 1. Anything else here would be a 0 out of 2. And next question, we're going to look... For 26, it says, Caleb claims that uh, this is a nonlinear function. Is Caleb correct? So, as always, I always say this with a uh, kind of, you know, 50-50 question, just saying, yeah, he's correct, or no, he's incorrect, and nothing else is a 0 out of 2. We're not awarded for kind of guessing here. Or maybe you don't know how to explain it. It doesn't matter if it's correct. It's more so the explanation here. So just looking at the table, we see it's a pattern of multiplying by 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So is Caleb correct that this was nonlinear? Yes. There's a few ways you can explain it. Um, you can say there's a pattern of multiplication, which exponential functions kind of exemplify. Uh, you could say there's no constant rate of change, kind of going the negative route. Like, hey, it's not linear because linear has a constant rate of change, and this one doesn't. And anything, you know, equivalent to that, questions like this can have a million different explanations that are all correct, but we want to make sure we're providing something worthwhile um, and not just, you know, gibberish. And 27. 27 was an interesting one, I thought, for a two-point question because uh, there's a decent amount of work to do here for a two-pointer. So it says to the nearest tenth, so right away that's hinting at me, I'm not going to factor this. I'm not going to do my sum product. You can, you're not going to find anything. It's not going to work out nicely. So I jumped right into quad formula. Um, I identified my A, B, and C values. I end up getting this little radical at the bottom here, negative 1 plus or minus radical 21 over 2. We want to be careful when we type this into our calculator, recall. I didn't do it here, but we'd want to have parentheses around the numerator to indicate or to not make the mistake of just dividing the radical by 2. If you type it in kind of how it looks in your calculator, it's not going to make it that massive fraction for you. So that's what the parentheses will do. And our two answers end up being 1.8 and negative 2.8. Make sure you round correctly here. We don't want to make a rounding mistake. What else could you have done besides quad formula? Certainly CTS. Wouldn't be that nice here because we have an odd B value. The other option would be using your graphing calculator. Notice it doesn't say the words uh, algebraically anywhere here. So how can I use my calculator? Obviously your table might not be a good approach, but there is a zero function on your calculator. This isn't necessarily a sketch of what this graph looks like. But when you do that zero feature, it's going to say left bound, right bound. 
um, and then guess, and it will tell you the zero. Obviously, it's a decimal, and when we want the other one, this would be our left bound. We're on the left-hand side of the root, the right-hand side, and guess. I usually just hit wherever I was for a right, and it will tell us the second root. So this is an option because it wasn't in algebraic. So interesting question, 27, to say the least. And last one for this section, uh, for 28, a transformation question. Usually we're asked to identify what the transformation is, but in this case they wanted to, us to graph it. And you might be saying, how could I graph something? I don't have any rules, any tables. I can't type this in my calculator. But really understand what's going on here, and it's actually pretty simple. First of all, this would apply our IHOP rule. The plus 2 in the parentheses tells us to shift our graph 2 units to the left. Now, how does that help me graph? Every nice point, I'm simply going to just slide over to. I see a nice point here. see a nice point here. And now this kind of gets the ball rolling. I don't have to worry about every single point. Just these, what does it work out to? Seven or so values. Looks like a quadratic, and it is. Um, once I have those seven nice points, you can see mine. I'm going to connect it with a nice smooth curve. Okay, and once it's all done, just do a quick visual inspection. Does it look like from black to purple, we shifted two to the left? Yes. And once again, it is two to the left, not two to the right here. That's that IHOP rule. It's inside. It's going to be the opposite um, movement. Plus two actually moves it two to the left.